wanted to make a little video of the work that I've done to our LMTV, uh, specifically the 1078 for our uh, fire department. Um, I'm almost done with it. But, uh, I'll walk you around and, and show you what I've done. Done some paint and then decals from uh, decal shop, reflective. Then uh, got an auxiliary air line there. Uh, lights, side lights here that's uh, operated with a switch on the outside here. So it can be operated from the, from the back or from the ground. Then there's a light also up here that shines on the tank in the middle of the night so you can see, see what you're doing, see how much water you've got left. We've got the uh, Raven valve up there for the front nozzle, electronic valve, and then uh, one line up here with a 16 to 65 gallon minute nozzle. See those lights, there's one on the other side too that lights up the ground pretty good. Then uh, repurpose the ladder that came on the LMTV on the back. Repurpose that for access up into the back. And then made a handhold so you can climb up there really easily. Valve for the hose reel. Pump controls. On the back lights, warning lights from STL, Speed Tech lights. Three-inch cam lock fill, rear-facing LEDs. Oh, probably 250 feet of hose. Reflective stickers there. I've got a foam system that injects foam, pulls it into the pump with this uh, spaghetti line, airline, with the quick disconnect uh, couplers. You can just go right into any pump with a uh, eight inch fitting. And then there's an electronic solenoid, sprayer solenoid right there that control from the cab. You can click on and off and have the uh, foam on demand. So I've got five gallons there and another five gallons on the front of the truck. Uh, toolbox, these are uh, military surplus. Uh, general mechanics toolboxes that we get from uh, the GSA department for a discounted price and they come loaded with uh, full of SK tools so you get your metric open and SAE and then sockets screwdrivers and pry bars cameras and a waterproof uh, pelican type case. And those are hard mounted to the side of the tank. And they're lockable. Still got that other side light. I left this panel on just to make it a little safer when you're standing up there so you don't have a big open hole. And then I've got a uh, 10 gallon gas tank for the uh, pump motor mounted right there. And the other five gallons of foam. Keep a uh, chain, some jumper cables, tire chalk, and uh, crank handle for the uh, hose reel if the motor on the hose reel quits. And cab controls, pretty standard. Spare tire. Look around the outside. Then I've got a uh, Speed Tech Icon 100 watt siren mounted in the bumper. 52 inch light bar. Uh, 
then there's uh, LEDs on all four corners on the top of the cab. And then a 52 inch Speedtech uh, TIR uh, light bar up on top that's red only. And then this is the fire nozzle that I've made. And it's got uh, just side to side movement right now. And I'm adding a, another uh, linear actuator, two inch linear actuator that will be mounted on the front of the bumper right here. And that'll give me about 20 degrees of movement up and down. So as you can see, that linear actuator moves with the, uh, with the nozzle. You go up and down on a pivot there. So that'll give me a pretty good amount of travel. And then uh, this is on a swivel, hose swivel. Um, and then I went to a, to a one inch NTP adapter to a one inch NH ad adapter to an Akron. Um, this is a 12 to 30 nozzle and just took the handle off of it. So I've got a standard nozzle here that can be adjusted from a jet to a fan fairly easily. And generally I just keep it on 23 gallons a minute, which is plenty. And uh, I've already got the wires set up for the other uh, actuator that will be coming. And then I've got a couple of magnets here for auxiliary extra tools, a little pipe wrench, and maybe a fence plier or something for cutting fences. I keep a uh, big, big cutter here, so I've got to go through a gate lock or something like that. I've got it handily available there. And then I've got a uh, remote kill for the pump so I can shut it off, shut the pump off. There's the fuel pump and then the engine kill to ground out the pump. So if I'm in a hurry to get back and so I don't have to stop and get out if I'm by myself or uh, just for safety, somebody doesn't have to get off the truck just to sh shut the pump off. I can kill it there and then go back to the tender or uh, next time we stop to shut it off and reset it. And then I've got my nozzle control here for the uh, front nozzle that controls that Raven valve. And then the foam switch there that uh, engages the foam system. And that foam pumps into the intake of the pump so it'll, it'll uh, work on the front nozzle and then the back nozzle or the hose reel if it's engaged. And then I've got my switch that moves the front nozzle right and left. Which, when I get my um, extra actuator this week, I'll be taking this out and then uh, switching over to a joystick, which I got from Amazon. The joystick was $40, and it's a four-way uh, linear actuator joystick. And then have some uh, double pull, double throw um, uh, relays coming as well that will help control that. Uh, movement. And what I'll probably end up doing is making a joystick control here with a uh, probably an armrest, something easy, so I don't have to reach forward to control the joystick on that uh, on that control. And then I've got my lights here for the LED lights, which are the front and the side and the rear lights there. And then I've got the STL. Uh, warning lights mounted up here and that'll control the rear flashers on the t uh, back and the side of the truck and then the light bar there and then the LED lights on the light bar then I've got a VCON code 3 uh, PA siren right there and then two-way radio and then the mics there and then I have a, uh, LED flares and then dome light from Amazon it's adjustable magnetic these things magnetic stuff works pretty well just because there's metal everywhere and then I keep a, another flashlight there set of goggles uh, dust mask smoke for uh, 
particulates air nozzle and then I've got in this road box behind the cab I've got um, first aid kit and the general first aid kit uh, AED some water spotlight and then the other one I keep a all the air tools, so half inch, half inch impact wrench, and some impact nozzles, or impact uh, sockets, and uh, air nozzle, and air chuck for tires. So if I've got to mess with the tire, somebody else's tire, or something like that, I've got that stuff there. And then some road flares, and then I've got a, a stick on the back that I can um, tape a road flare to. And go along instead of backfire if I need to. And then uh, mounted a, a fan here. Um, a couple of 12 volt power outlets for uh, charging phones or uh, spotlight or something. Another fire extinguisher there. And then there's one mounted in the back. And then I've just utilized all the power. Uh, off the uh, stock power studs there underneath the uh, fuse cover. This is a 1994 M1078A0. This is the designation of this unit here. But uh, got all the wires up here. Nothing too fancy, but uh, it works. And this is a 850 gallon tank with a uh, a deep sump on it, so the sump sticks down beneath the uh, the bed there. And then I've got a uh, cam lock valve, two inch, and then a two inch filter, all banjo stuff. Filter there, and everything can be taken apart for cleaning or. If we have to remove the tank or whatnot. I'll give you a top view up here. I know with these clear tanks, you have to worry about uh, algae building up in the summertime. So I came up with a deal here with some lineman tape rope and then uh, used a three inch piece of ABS pipe and then have the th uh, three inch chlorine tablets that fit right in there drilled a few holes in it there and just then leave that in the tank and then we're running about oh I think there's probably 28 or 30 uh, surge busters inside the tank because this uh, these smaller tanks don't have baffles in them so that's pretty necessary for keeping the slosh to a minimum top of that Raven control valve and they're they're pretty pricey it was I think the Raven control valve was around $500 but it's rated to 2,000 psi with the, it's a anhydrous uh, rated valve and then we use uh, the standard rings that come with the LMTV and, and made a makeshift pipe fitting on each side there and then you just easily slip that folder for your nozzle down in and move it from side to side if you need to there's one on this side some of these lights and then I've got an extra overflow here because sometimes you're uh, leaving the foam system on and it will uh, Put a lot of foam into the tank if you're not careful and this will keep the foam off the off the bed when you fill it up but it's a lot cheaper than uh, a store-bought foam system so a lot of 
outfit like us where we're limited on budget um, spending I think that little solenoid was about $70 for that solenoid and then some fittings and whatnot and we've got uh, a pretty good supply of foam to use and, and for uh, brush fires and putting fence posts out out in the range and, and uh, cow pies and stuff that foam really works well keeps our the startup um, down to a minimum for sure but uh, that's about it I just I'm looking forward to adding that second linear actuator on the front so I've got uh, a vertical movement on that front nozzle um, a lot of times we're by ourselves we're just limited on manpower so having that nozzle is really really important um, and I've seen the pre-made nozzles from Akron or different companies and they're five to six thousand dollars for a nozzle um, and I'm into this I'll be into this for a couple hundred bucks with actuators and wiring and all the relays and whatnot we already had the nozzle and then took the hose reel swivel off of another truck that we, we sold, surplused out. So this is uh, our uh, first 1078 to put into service. We've got a 1083 six by six that's in service and set up very similar to this. And we've got another 1078 that we'll be finishing up this winter. We've got the tank mounted on it and uh, the framework done on that one we've cut the bed uh, about right here and then mounted the tank frame it's a similar tank but mounted it right on the frame so it lowered the whole tank about 12 to 13 inches down compared to this truck so it will uh, have a little bit better stability on the side hills than this truck but um, and we're just setting up another uh, deal right now to get another uh, 1083 with the DNR so we'll have uh, four LMTVs in our department and uh, a big plus with these trucks is everything's the same and they're automatic and anybody can get in them and drive them and they're very easy to drive uh, a lot of our old trucks are stick shift with high low gears and uh, um, not everybody knows how to drive a stick so and the visibility and safety with these trucks really is an improvement over our old internationals that are in the 1970s range. So, and being able to work with the DNR and get these trucks for next to nothing. So it makes it really nice.